whenever this first reading comes up, I always feel for, and, and, and our first reader, so thank you, Francis, you did a great job with it. With those big names, it's probably the worst reading as a reader. When you, when you look at it, you look and there's all these letters in these names, and they're not common names like Steve or Mike or Jane or anything like that. And, and it's not just like it's mentioned once where you can just push through it, but rather they repeat the whole trilogy of names probably seven or eight times, as well as the king's name probably the same amount, so um, it, it's easy for us to listen to, but uh, not so easy to read. So I'd like to look at this reading because it's actually an exciting reading of what happens and a wonderful testimony of faith, and I think we need to hear this, especially as we're in our last week or so of Lent. This is a time where, um, just sort of like New Year's resolutions, where it could easily have happened where we've, we've left certain things that we said we'd do in prayer or fasting or almsgiving. So this reading really does a great job of encouraging us, of inspiring us to, to push forward in this last push of Lent in terms of prayer, fasting, almsgiving, and, and living the season of Lent, really entering into the desert. So um, just to recap, we see this King Nebuchadnezzar, and he's very upset. Oh boy, is this guy upset. It even says his face was distorted. He was so full with rage that um, these three guys, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're very rebellious to him. How come you will not obey the king? I am the king. Anything I say, you need to do. And sure enough, he built this golden statue. He's built this golden statue and says, you have to worship this statue and serve my gods. Small g. Notice in the, when you look at the reading, a small g, big g. Small g is, is the king's makeup god, gods, and then the big g is, is God. So he's saying, how come you're not serving my gods and worshiping my golden statue? And, you know, pretty much when you hear the sound of a horn, a pipe, a lyre, and whenever you hear anything, it drop down and start to worship. I'm the king. You can see him sort of full of rage. How come you're not doing this? But if you do not worship, he says, you shall be immediately thrown into a furnace of blazing fire. And who is the God that will deliver you out of my hands because I'm the ultimate authority here? Wow. Quite the threat when you think about it. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they're wonderful examples of faith. Tremendous examples of faith. Because even with faced with this tyrant of a king, this unjust king, this, um, this ruler that rules with the iron fist, very emotional roller coaster you can hear with his rage and his distorted face and they're getting upset. Why aren't you worshiping my gods and the statue that I built? They decide to be faithful to God, regardless of the consequences, regardless of the consequences. And there's a line that they say here which I find very shocking. So the, the, the king puts the challenge out, what God will deliver you from my hands? And then they answer the king. Listen to the answer. It's, it's at the top of page 57. They say, O oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to present a defense to you in this matter. If our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the furnace of blazing fire and out of your hand, let him deliver us. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods and we will not worship the golden statue that you have set up. What a tremendous act of faith. They know what's going to happen to them if they rebel in this way. And they say, if it's God's will to save us, he will. But if not, we will not be unfaithful to our God. We will not worship these idols, no matter what the consequence what an act of faith. <laughs> that is deep and profound faith. If it's God's will, he will save us. But if not, that's fine. We're willing to die for this. They're willing to die for their faith. Wow. That's why this reading is so helpful in this last week or so of Lent. It's an inspiration to us. If these three people are willing to die for their faith, to be faithful to God, to their promise of faith, to be faithful to God. What's stopping you and I from being faithful to our promises or whatever we decided to live this Lent? 
I remember the first weekend in Lent when I was talking about suggestions on things to do, on suggestions for fasting, suggestions for almsgiving, suggestions for prayer. I had quite the reaction when I said, you know, fasting from some of the things that are our comforts, our guilty pleasures, the things that we do so habitually or, or love to do, whether it be spending time on technology or, or shopping or um, giving up some sports or limiting TV time or simple things like that. Like these are tiny, tiny sacrifices when faced with a burning fire of a furnace to, to follow our faith, really. These things are small sacrifices. Yet we hold on to them so hard, we won't let them go. All these things, though, these reasons why we fast, we give alms, we pray, pray, it's to create space in our heart, to create space in our lives, to create time to enter the desert and come closer to God. To give Him that time, to give Him those opportunities that otherwise we fill with other things. And yet we hold on to them. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego are wonderful examples of faith for us. They're willing to give up everything, even their lives, just to be faithful to God. How easy would it have been, how easy and tempting maybe it would have been to just say, okay, when I hear the the flute, the lyre, the pipe, whatever it is, the drum, I'll I'll do the dance, I'll do the jig so that I, I can save my life, and then I'll go pray in private to God. But I'll jump through the hoops. It's so easy, too, when you think about it. But they say, no, that would be unfaithful to God. That would be worshiping a false god. That would be bringing a false idol before God. Often the things that we attach ourselves to so firmly are false gods. The material possessions or habits or whatever it may be, they're false gods that we give power over us, we give time to. And sure enough, what is, what is the big theme in today's gospel? It's slavery to sin, slavery to attachments, slavery to material things. And they're like, you know, the people listening here, the Jews that are listening, they don't understand. What are you talking about, slavery? I'm not a slave. I'm a free person. Jesus is saying that, Whenever you have a sin that you've been working through and struggling with, or that you just decide not to fight and just enjoy and live every day, maybe it's such a a habit that you don't even realize it, you are a slave to that sin. You are a slave to that sin. And we are called to be free, and we see the freedom that we need in these three people of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. We see that freedom. They're free to say, I'm not attached to anything in this life. Because my relationship with God is rock solid and I know where I'm going because I wasn't made for this world. This is such a short period of time, 80, 100 years, we'll say. But we are made for eternity with God the Father. That's our purpose. That's our point. That's our mission is to get to God, to heaven. To get to heaven. And Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they show us, they show us exactly that detachment that we need to have from everything complete detachment, and that firmness in faith, knowing that if it's God's will, He will save us. If it's God's will, He will provide for us. If God decides not to, that's fine. It's for my best interest in some way. I have faith and I trust that God knows what He's doing if He decides not to act right away. And that theme with Lazarus, why did Jesus wait two days when hearing the news that Lazarus was sick? Why did He show up four days late after Lazarus was dead? God acts at the right time because He always has His compass ordered towards the salvation of our souls and deeper faith. Everything He does is ordered towards deeper faith and the salvation of our souls. And sure enough, that's what happened in today's Gospel. They stoked the fire seven times hotter than it usually is. Seven times hotter. Imagine the shock on the king's face. What are they calling him? The satraps, the prefects, the governors, the king's counselors, everybody gathered probably to watch this roast, thinking those morons. We're going to see them burn and see them cry for mercy. And what happens? Where's the hottest place in the fire? Right in the center. Anyone who's made mar- burn marshmallows, done s'mores, they know. Right in the center, that's the hottest part of a fire. That's where you're the sweet spot. And what does the king and all these people see? 
These guys dancing in the center of the fire, praising God, blessing his name. When they come out, they don't smell like smoke or fire. Their hair is fine, their tunics aren't burnt. How is this possible? What happens? What happens? Everyone proclaims in great faith, starting with the king. Everyone proclaims in great faith, starting with the king. Truly, this God is God. The statue is nothing. The gods that I made, nothing. I've never seen this before. This is King Nebuchadnezzar. Remember the one who was um, running his, his little empire to, to, uh, with great tyranny? He says, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and delivered his servants who trusted in him. They disobeyed the king's command and yielded up their bodies rather than serve and worship any god except their god. Tremendous act of faith. Conversions all across the board. Every time God acts, it's to lead to deeper faith, to conversion of all those who need to receive that healing. So today, as we hear the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, let us pray today that we may be inspired, we may be inspired by their testimony of faith, by their detachment from all things, their deep faith and trust in God, Follow God's will completely. Let us be re-inspired in this last push, this last week or so in the desert with Jesus, that we too make grow, we too may grow and be detached from anything that leads us away from God, that we may fully enter into the Holy Triduum coming up next week.